Section 2. The World God Created. 1. In the Bible, Genesis 1:27 states, God created humankind in his image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them therefore, we can deduce that male and female exist within God. God is the one subject partner who manifests these two beings as one. Adam and Eve are the ones who are to resemble his dual characteristics. God is a harmonious being of dual characteristics. 2. God exists as the subject partner with dual characteristics. He manifested his internal masculinity to become substantially visible through Adam as his counterpart, and he manifested his internal femininity substantially through Eve. In other words, human beings represent the investment and substantial embodiment of all that is within God's internal nature. 3. The unification principle defines God as the incorporeal, absolute subject partner, the subject partner with dual characteristics in harmony. As a being with dual characteristics, God created Adam and Eve as his substantial second selves to reflect his characteristics individually. He intended to become the center in the vertical position when they fully matured and became one flesh with each other horizontally through love. What this means is that when Adam and Eve reached full maturity, God's masculinity was to reside in Adam's heart and mind, and his femininity in Eve's heart and mind. This, however, does not mean that God is divided. He is the subject partner of these dual characteristics. He can dwell in the heart and mind of both Adam and Eve. 4. From where do subject partner and object partner arise? There must be a base for their existence. In the Unification Church we call this base the dual characteristics. Human beings themselves do not create the subject and object partners. Energy is always in motion. Yet in order for energy to be in motion, there must be a circuit through which it can flow. Energy cannot continue without a circuit of giving and receiving. For instance, the heart operates within the circulatory system, made up of veins and arteries. All action requires a reciprocal relationship between a subject partner and an object partner. Before energy can exist, there must be a subject partner and an object partner. All subject and object partners must have a base for their existence. 5. When we look at the cosmos, we see that all beings exist in order to participate in relationships of love. In the mineral world there are plus and minus, in the plant world there are stamen and pistil, in the animal world there are male and female, in the human world there are men and women, and there are heaven and earth. All of this is because God is a being of dual characteristics, who exists as the harmonious unity of plus and minus within himself. When God relates to his creation, this harmonious being of dual characteristics takes the masculine position. 6. Adam and Eve are the fruit, the visible substantial image, of God's internal nature. When they form a union, it becomes the base on which God's internal character and external form are united in substance for the first time. This is where the realm of heart begins. Based on this family realm of heart, the realm of heart opens and expands to the tribal level. Hence, Adam and Eve were to become the representatives of the individual realm of heart family realm of heart and national realm of heart. The model for all these roles was to have been established in Adam's generation. 7. Why did God create human beings? In order to answer this, we need to answer the fundamental question of why we were born. God is the subject partner of love. The divine principle refers to him as a harmonious being of dual characteristics, but it does not explain that he is a unified being of love. It should add that he is a unified being of love. 8. The unification principle sets forth that God exists as our subject partner, with dual characteristics in harmony. We base this on undeniable facts drawn from scientific analysis. When subject and object partners are totally united, God's power will be with them eternally. A place where subject partner and object partner did not exist is void of power. Then how does God exist? He exists forever by the power that is generated by the giving and receiving between the subject partner and object partner positions within himself. This is how we can explain God's existence logically. 9. Consider God's dual characteristics. All the ideal elements of his first characteristic, everything that God imagined and planned, 
are substantiated in each man. When each man reaches maturity according to the ideal of love, then the male realm of the universe reaches maturity. So who can bring this male realm to maturity? It is Adam, who should have become the true father of humanity. This is something that Adam could have made possible. Likewise, through Eve, the female realm could have come to maturity. Then these two should have become one. For this reason, a man has to relate with a woman, and a woman has to relate with a man. The two have to make a relationship and become one. On this foundation, they should bear children. Only then can God finally dwell on the horizontal plane.